Banks are starting to fold, and I'm wondering, are you ready for the next financial crisis? Well, the answer is no, if you haven't considered what I'm going to talk about in this video. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and one of my favorite aspects of being a prepper is that when unexpected events occur in the world and they have everybody around you just running around like chickens with their head cut off, uh, for you as a prepper in terms of what you need to do to react to that event, the answer is generally, if you've done your job right, not really much of anything at all. Uh, you know, maybe you cross some T's and dot some I's, but the idea is that you've really taken care of a lot of that stuff. And what I want to talk about specifically in this video is the unfolding potential financial crisis, uh, you know, with the banking sector that we are looking at now. We don't know how far this is going to go. Maybe we've seen all of it and this is the full extent. Maybe it's going to continue, you know, as far as things uh, progress back in 2008. Maybe it even goes further than that. We really don't know. So that's why we prep and prepare is because, you know, we don't know exactly uh, what will happen in the future and certainly not exactly when things will happen. So if you get prepared ahead of time, if and when they happen, it's not that big a deal. And it really isn't that big of a deal, uh, you know, for people who have prepared for it. And I want to talk a little bit in this video about what I have done to put myself in a position right now where I'm kind of like, eh, not that big a deal one way or the other what happens. I mean, you know, obviously I have compassion for people around me and the world and I don't want to see people suffer, but in terms of you know, my own personal uh, experience of it and the experience of my family, it really doesn't matter to us one way or the other what ends up happening because we've taken precautions about it. So what are the precautions that I've taken that allow me to really not care that much about what's going on? You know, follow the news stories, but don't, you know, don't have any nightmares about it. Well, uh, the actions that I've taken are all things that I've done over, over years. Like I said, this isn't something I'm doing anything right now. In fact, there aren't even any T's to cross or I's to dot. Uh, at the moment, and the things that I've done is uh, diversification. I do keep money electronically in banks. It's just a convenient thing to do, so you can easily pay someone with a check, or uh, you know, you can pay a credit card bill electronically online. I think that's really uh, you know easy and convenient. I know a lot of people want to stay away from their, any of their finances being uh, you know online or any of that. Anything like that, so you keep money in a bank, but you don't use any online payments. But the reality is, is you know, if you have money in a bank, it's it's open and vulnerable to the internet, whether or not you take advantage of that or not. So I take advantage of those things, and for that reason, I like to keep some money in the bank, uh, so that you know, I can I can pay people in a in a way that's convenient and trackable. Uh, but that's not the only place where I keep any of my currency wealth. I also keep it in, in hard currency, you know, like paper currency. Uh, you know, I keep a fair bit of that in case there was ever a situation, you know, even forgetting a, you know, a banking crisis or like the bank shut down or anything like that. Just, you know, maybe you were driving somewhere and there's a yard sale. And, you know, most yard sales don't take credit cards. So it's nice to have some cash on hand for that. Or, you know, maybe uh, there is a, a situation where, you know, the power goes out in a town and they can't run their credit card machines. It's nice to be able to, you know, keep engaging in commerce and not have to rearrange your entire schedule on the idea that, you know, the banks aren't there to support me. So, and I can't support myself. Uh, so, you know, I'm screwed. So that's one thing that I do. I keep uh, hard currency as a, th a diversification in addition to the money that I keep in the bank. In addition to that, I am also a, a big proponent of heavy metals. <laughs> Precious metals. I'm not that big a fan of heavy metals. Um, unless it comes to music, but you know, I don't even much care for heavy metal music either. So I guess heavy metal in all its forms, I'm, I'm not a particularly big fan of. Um, but precious metals, the thing that I am a fan of, uh, that's something that I am a fan of because, again, that diversification uh, aspect, it's something that even if I can't get access to my money, I have, uh, you know, some way of trading or bartering, and that also covers the idea of a devaluation of a currency, and that is certainly something that I think all of us need to have in our minds at the moment is the idea that the uh, the value of the U.S. dollar 
might today be much higher than it is going to be in the potentially not too distant future. So diversifying out into precious metals is a good way of you know uh, preserving wealth and kind of uh, you know crystallizing it in some kind of a form that doesn't easily evaporate. I, I don't see it as an investment. Some people uh, kind of see it as an investment. They want to buy low and sell high. I don't do that at all. It's more for me just kind of a life raft. And having a life raft and having diversification of uh, you know physical currency so that you aren't totally relying on the electronic system uh, working gives me an enormous amount of peace of mind going into these uh, situations. And on top of that, the other thing that I do is uh, turning my wealth, uh, instead of it just being electronic numbers in a bank, turning it into real assets in addition to precious metals like food or any of the types of things you might want to you know, buy with your money. Whenever I'm in a situation where I can purchase something uh, that I know that I'm going to get it I know that I'm going to have a need for at some point. Uh, I always heavily consider the idea of making that purchase. Now, the downside is that you're, you're burdened with a thing instead of like having like a convenient, completely ethereal, uh, you know, weightless, doesn't take up any space kind of number in your bank. But once you turn it into something that you know that you're eventually going to be uh, turning that that number in a bank into, uh, you know, you've locked it in and that number in the bank can't just evaporate, uh, at least not the part that you, you know, convert it into a real thing like food or supplies or any of the other types of things that you know that you're going to be, uh, you know, using at some point. So that is another way that I've kind of diversified. What my advice to people, whenever they're wondering about this type of stuff, whenever people see me and uh, you know, think that I was making some kind of amazing financial decisions. And I don't want to give the impression that I'm giving financial advice uh, right now because I'm not. I'm not really particularly financially savvy. I have just the lightest sense of how the whole system works. Um, and the majority of the time, uh, you know, uh, from the past up until now, m people tend to think that I'm overly cautious and, you know, foolish because of my uh, overcaution. Uh, occasionally, uh, during certain events, they think that I'm a genius because, because the fact I was being kind of conservative it made it look like I was foreseeing something happening before it happened. But the reality is I just tend to be kind of cautious and conservative when it comes to money. I've worked very hard to, uh, you know, to earn it and I don't want it to just be evaporated away willy-nilly because, you know, I've... Uh, you know, fail to kind of, uh, you know, like say, crystallize it into something real. So uh, I don't want to give the impression that I'm giving financial advice in this. I'm not. I'm just telling you guys what I've done in the past. Uh, and uh, I've missed out on a lot of opportunities by uh, doing things this way, by having a hard physical currency, uh, you know, in my possession as opposed to investing that. I missed out on investment opportunities. But at the same time, when the market uh, enters a situation like this, I'm also missing out on all the stress and drama and fear that a lot of people are living through right now. And what I tell people about uh, you know, my, my method and approach to this is that whenever I think about whether any kind of event, whether it is a financial crisis or you know, a hurricane event or a, you know, a pandemic uh, disease outbreak, I always try to picture myself in the future of what are the sorts of things that I will be wanting and wishing that I had procured for myself in that event. And I'll give you an example. During COVID, during the beginning of COVID, I began taking stocks of all of my respirators. Uh, now, at this point, I'm just going to say, um, um, just so you guys aren't like, uh, you know, chomping the bit to remind me of this. In the, in the past couple of months, it started to seem apparent to me that maybe respirators weren't that critical of a tool. They, while they did help somewhat, um, you know, they weren't nearly as beneficial as I presumed that they were going to be. Uh, at this point, I, I understand that, but at the beginning of COVID, I didn't, you know, what I know now, I didn't know then, and I was taking stock of all my respirators. Now, I knew I had a lot of them, but what I hadn't realized is that I was really low on children's size respirators, and it was for a stupid reason. Uh, I happened to have accidentally opened up the children's size respirators once when I was doing some work with like dirt or dust or sawdust or something like that, and I grabbed the respirator, I you know, went all the way to the work site, and I saw it was a small, and I was just like, ah, it'll work anyway. <laughs> Put it on, and it kind of didn't, you know, cover up everything perfectly, but it was better than having nothing. And that happened a number of times, and I ended up kind of eating through accidentally um, a lot, a lot of my children's size respirators. Now, when COVID uh, began, uh, I went and I kind of took stock of everything I had, and I was kind of sh a little, I'm not going to say shocked, but I was disappointed to realize that every single time I was grabbing a respirator, I was always getting the wrong size and just being like, ah, this will be fine. Um, shooting myself in the foot later because 
Suddenly, at the beginning of COVID, I was really low on children's size respirators, and you just couldn't get them. It was a source of stress and anxiety for me because I wanted to be able to go out in public and uh, you know continue to do some of the things that we were doing. We were distancing from people and all that, and I think that was honestly the most effective thing that we did. Uh, but uh, you know, we still want to go out and do grocery shopping, and I didn't want my boy to become a complete recluse. I wanted him to be able to you know. Uh, go outside and limit his potential of getting a disease that at that point, you know, we didn't know how bad it was going to be. So it gave me a lot of uh, concern. I had some respirators, but uh, it was a very limited number and I had to think about it and having to think about, well, do I have enough? How many times do I have to, you know, ration this and reuse this? Um, it, you know, it added additional stress uh, and you just couldn't buy those respirators back then. You know, now at this point, you certainly can. And as soon as I had an opportunity, I stocked up on them. But that was one of those situations where if I had uh, projected myself out into the future prior to the pandemic and thought, okay, well, you know, you got all the adult sized respirators, but what about your boy? Do you have enough for him? Maybe you should actually check and see if you have enough for him. It would have prevented an awful lot of stress on my part. So that's the best advice advice that I can give to you is that whenever you're thinking about any of these situations, try to project yourself out into that uh, situation and, you know, film and cinema and stories, uh, you know, can be helpful for this because you can see a character kind of going through things and it can give you ideas about like, oh, you know, if that person just had X, Y, or Z, it would be making their life easier right now. So if that situation ever pops up for me, uh, like, you know, a zombie apocalypse, you know, I will wish that I had X, Y, and Z too. So maybe I want to procure those things ahead of time. That I think is the best thing that you can do because the one of the worst feelings in the world is to be in a situation that you know you very easily could have af avoided if you just put a little time and a little effort uh, and a little investment uh, into preventing that situation from coming up in the first place. So that's something that has worked for me through two or one and a half uh, financial crises so far. Uh, it's worked for me reasonably well during COVID. Uh, you know, if if and when we get into this, uh, you know, uh, spell it out so I don't uh, poison the video, W-A-R uh, thing that's brewing on the other side of the planet with, uh, you know, people fighting over a country that begins with the letter U. Uh, you know, if and when ever that blows up into a, um, you know, a larger situation, and I really think that it's going to, I try to project myself out into the future and think, you know, what are the things that I'll wish that I procured that today, right now, right now, as you're watching this video, it is so easy to get X, Y, Z, put yourself out into that future. And those things might not only be more expensive or more difficult to get, they may just not be available at all. So give it some thought, whether it's financial crises or WAR or whatever, put yourself in your future self, uh, take some time to think about it. And if there are any steps that you'll have wished that you took, take them today. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you haven't seen my alien invasion series, here's a link to it so you can check it out.